The trend is troubling and persistent for U.S. military ranks. U.S. troop suicides are still maintaining high levels despite years of tracking the effects of mental trauma on soldiers. The great irony, as the wars wind down, Even those who survived the combat well now feel there's no meaning left in their life because there's no more war because that's all they've known. With 2012 coming to an end, U.S. officials report the Army and Navy are already reporting record numbers of suicides. Similar record numbers are being recorded in the Air Force and Marine Corps, making 2012 the worst year for military suicides since diligent tracking began in 2001. The traumatic effects of war are lasting, say experts. If they're just standing guard and isolated and see nothing, that probably has little effect. If you're flying a drone, it probably is like doing a video game. But if you're, you know, if you're in a street patrol and you see your friend being killed, that can be very traumatic. As researchers study the causes of suicides in the military, doctors are evaluating the ratio of suicide rates and frequent deployments. According to the latest estimates, the number of active duty soldiers who committed suicide as of last week stood at 323. That breaks the previous number of 310 set back in 2009 within the same time period. The Army accounted for 168 of those deaths, surpassing its high last year of 165. Fifty-three sailors took their own lives, one more than last year. Experts say it's a troubling epidemic that indicates failures in the way soldiers are being cared for by the military. You're paying the price for a long war fought by a small number of people who you sent into combat without enough time at home to get their lives back together before you send them. Other branches of the military have not reached record numbers, but have reported sustained high self-inflicted casualties. In the Air Force, 56 airmen had committed suicide as of mid-November, short of the 60 in 2010. There have been 46 suicides among Marines, whose worst year was 2009 with 52 deaths. Colin Campbell, Press TV, Washington. Dark suits in government administration and people in uniform. What are you doing? What is it about uniform? Are people like putting fancy dress on? I mean, you know, I mean, look at this guy, this Swiss guard of the Vatican. And they've got guns, these people. I mean, being shot is bad enough, but being shot by someone in pyjamas must be a nightmare. <laughs> Bloody hell. Oh, the world's mad. That's where I came in, isn't it? Bloody hell. Anyway. All these people, you know, these, these have families and grandchildren and children and all that stuff and they're hijacking their future. As, as they, you know, the Occupy protesters say to the police, you're the 99% too. Because there are so few in full knowledge who are manipulating humanity that they have to recruit from the target population to enforce their agenda upon the target population. And all these people, these first responders, 9-11, who are now dying of the diseases of breathing in what they knew was in that debris, who were uh, denied the finances, even for the drugs and stuff, to treat what they have. All these people losing limbs and losing lives in wars of conquest and wars of tyranny. I mean, defending and increasing the, the, the opium crop. This is, this is the opium production in Afghanistan and the CIA control. This is since the takeover or the invasion. That was the little bit with the Taliban. I've got a brief of the Taliban. I mean, don't start me off. But uh, on this, look at it. W- w- the troops are defending the, the opium crop. And they're losing their limbs and they're killing kids and things for it. You know, Bertrand Russell said, many a man will have the courage. It's a funny thing, this, physical courage and moral courage. So often people find physical courage easier. Many a man will have the courage to die gallantly, but will not have the courage to say or even think that the cause for which he is asked to die is an unworthy one. It's about time they did. Don't tell me, people in uniform, that when you're killing kids, that... You're just following bloody orders. No, no. As uh, Woody Guthrie said, 
I would like to see every single soldier on every single side just take off your helmet, unbuckle your kit, lay down your rifle and set down on the side of some shady lane and say, nope, I ain't gonna kill nobody. Plenty of rich folks wanna fight, give them the guns. Come on, people in uniform, put down your weapons. You're fighting for a system that is designed to destroy your freedom and your family's freedom. Put your guns down, for goodness sake. We don't want war. You probably don't, most of you want to fight wars, even though you're in bloody uniform. But we fight them anyway. This is what Henry Kissinger said about American troops. They're dumb, stupid animals to be used as pawns for foreign policy. That's what they think of you. Oh, support the troops. There, yeah, support the troops while they're serving the system. And when they challenge the system, put them in a psychiatric freaking home because uh, they must be mad because they're questioning 9-11. They don't give a shit about you. They don't. You're just a pawn in a game, and when you're maimed and can't fight anymore, they'll get some more bloody pawns. I mean, they're putting troops into situations where they get radiation and diseases like Gulf War Syndrome. These people that are so often, not all of them, but many of them, so officious and unpleasant, of the TSA and the airport security and stuff, many of them are going down like nine pins at some airports from the cumulative effect of radiation from the very bloody machines that they're putting people through. Now, they don't give a shit about you because they know some other mug will come along and stand there eventually, especially in a recession when people are desperate for money. Vacancies available. There you go, join the army. I'm digging my own grave now. That's a great idea, isn't it? What is it uh, Senator George McGovern said? I think he died recently. What a great quote. He talked about old men dreaming up wars for young men to die in. Well, come on, young men and young women. Stop bloody dying in them then and stop killing others in them. Make a choice. It's your power. And what, what do they bloody do to the people that survive the wars, eh? In old age, oh, support the troops. And they cut back their bloody benefits and cut them back. They don't give a shit about you. You can't bloody fight anymore. No use to us. Albert Einstein, the pioneers of a warless world are the youth that refuse military service. And, and the older people that support them in that aim. I'm so proud my son is serving his country. Oh, really? You're proud that he's serving his bloody uh, country in the way of putting himself in danger and killing bloody others? Oh, God, that's something to be proud of, Dad. The draft is coming. I want you uh, for the U.S. Army and all this stuff. Bollocks, we ain't doing it. Okay. We're having a draft, everyone in the army, bugger off, we're not doing it, where's their power? Their power is in our acquiescence to their demands, enough! These are wonderful people, these Israelis are wonderful people who are going to prison because they will not serve the Israeli tyranny against Palestinians, wonderful people. These Iraq veterans who've sussed it, who've seen what they were used for. Look at it. What are you doing? It's unbelievable. Know thyself. You're not a man in uniform. You are infinite awareness. And consciousness doesn't fight because consciousness knows that that which is fighting is an expression of itself. Mind fights mind. Five sense Bubble fights, five cents bubble. Consciousness doesn't fight because it's too aware to do so. As someone brilliantly said, the real fight in terms of people in uniform and soldiers and military, the real fight is not with others, the real fight is with, with your own unconsciousness, with your own unawareness. Wake up and see it.
So it seems demonic forces are just daily in portals. The light continues, it shrouds our eyes and makes us see nothing. The lives are recycled, so people stop living. Then all of a sudden, the same lie is told again. Look in the mirror and the man that I do before I discover. Sudden the same lie could be told again Look at the 